The Hijab Boutique by Michelle Kahn. Chapter 2. Me, the Invisible Girl. The next week zips by. International Women's Day has come and gone. We're currently on the third and final day of presentations, and my sense of dread starts to build up. I managed to avoid being called on both last Thursday and Friday. Forget having the Monday blues today. I've got a serious case of nervous butterflies. Once again, I've come to school empty-handed. Guilt over skipping a homework assignment sits in my belly like a heavy rock. This is definitely a new and super uncomfortable experience for me. The last presentation is concluding. My classmate Roxanne is passing around different fancy schmancy anklets that her mother's company makes. Please handle these items with care, girls, Miss Grant says. Most of these anklets are made with real gems cast in gold and silver. Yes, my mama gave me this stuff on loan. Roxanne says so quietly in her Texan accent that you practically have to fall out of your seat to hear her. The prized anklets that are circulating land in Tammy's hands. She naturally has to make a splash as the leader of the coolest ice girls. In a blink of an eye, Tammy rolls up the hem of her uniform and tries on a pair of anklets. How do I look? Tammy asks, standing up and strutting her stuff like a model on an imaginary catwalk. I half expect my fellow classmates to break out in applause. While this doesn't happen, our room is abuzz with excitement. She looks absolutely stunning, I hear girls whisper from the desks behind me. Tammy has gone from popular student to celebrity extraordinaire. Geez, those anklets make some noise, Juliet, another one of the coolest ice girls says. Who would have thought that Roxanne's got a mama who makes tinkling, jingling anklets, I say to myself. After all, Roxanne is the quietest student in our class. If you ask me, that's pretty ironic. Boy, would my English teacher be proud that I just used one of her spelling test words. I know for a fact that my mom would never wear a pair of noisy anklets. Not because anklets are a fashion don't or anything, Rather, our holy book, the Quran, states that women shouldn't wear anything that makes noise when they walk. Yes, my mom is different, yet again. Once the last of the anklets has finished circulating, I sink deep into my seat, hoping against hope that Miss Grant won't notice me. I wish I could press a secret button under my desk to become the invisible girl. Why haven't scientists come up with this invention? Why, why, why... Oh, Allah, please, please, please don't let her call on me, I silently pray. It's too late. Miss Grant looks at me directly. You're up next, Farrah Khan. In fact, you're the last student remaining to present. It turns out Allah has another plan for me. Perspiration trickles down my back. Suddenly, an age-old excuse pops into my head. Um, Miss Grant... I blurred out nervously. I don't actually have anything to present. My uh, dog ate my homework. My classmates hoot with laughter. Nice one, Farah. Someone cheers. I'm not in the mood to be congratulated. I didn't mean to be funny, and deep in my heart, I know I shouldn't have lied about it. Not even a white lie like this one. But my lame excuse came blurting out on account of desperation. Feeling totally ill at ease, I sink even deeper into my seat. If only the floor would swallow me whole. That's enough, Miss Grant says firmly, cutting into my thoughts and into the chuckles rippling through the room. Farah, I'd like to speak to you privately. Everyone else is dismissed as there are no further presentations. As expected, there are no objections to an early exit. Girls practically fly out of our classroom. As I approach my teacher, it feels like lead weights are strapped to my desk. Miss Grant takes a seat behind her desk. Would you care to tell me what's going on? I stand before her like a soldier who's been caught deserting his post. Words struggle to escape my dry tongue. Miss Grant isn't rattled by my silence. I know you don't have a pet pooch, Farah. I remember the excellent paper you wrote on Islam and animals. Guilt splatters cherry-colored paint across my cheeks. I don't know what I was thinking when I told that lie. You're right, Miss Grant, 
I state quietly with my shoes shuffling. We don't have any dogs. Frankly, I don't know what to make of this, Miss Grant admits, fingering a manila file folder on her desk. You usually put 200% effort into your assignments. I nod in agreement. I don't mean to pry, Miss Grant says delicately, but is everything okay at home? Yes, I cry abruptly. I mean, everything is great at home. Then what is it? I decide to be honest. There's no point in, de in denying my dilemma any longer. My head hangs so low that my dark hair masks my vision. The truth is, while well, my mother is, well, boring. Oh, my word, Miss Grant states, throwing her liver-spotted hand to her chest. I can't believe you said that. I've met Mrs. Kahn at parent-teacher conferences, and she's not dull in the least. I shake my head fiercely. She's not like the other girls' moms, I yelp. I searched my house from top to bottom looking for something interesting to present, but I came up with nothing. Miss Grant crosses her arms squarely. I find that hard to believe. I'm giving you one more week to find something. Otherwise, you'll be subject to detention, young lady. I swallow a gulp the size of a football. I've never been in any teacher's bad books before. I find Ashanti waiting for me outside our classroom. I'm so happy to see my loyal friend that I give her a great big bear hug. I tell Ashanti about my one week deadline. I'm in serious panic mode because I have no idea how I'll find anything. We walk to the banana boat together trying to think up a solution. Ashanti scrunches up her forehead in deep thought. Why don't you tell everyone about your mom's knack for art, she suggests. No, that won't do, I say, shrugging off her idea. Okay, it's true. My mom makes a killer paper mache paste, and she made the beautiful quilt hanging in our living room. But she isn't exactly the next Pablo Picasso. I don't see why you can't talk about your mom's artistic talents, Ashanti persists. She's held craft parties for us every Monday night since we were four years old. I still won't budge. The last thing I want is for everyone to think of us as toddlers who still like to cut and paste. Not in our school. You're such a stubborn mule, Ashanti laughs, putting her strong arm around my shoulder. But I get your point. I am looking forward to what your mom has planned for us this evening, though.